Hey, what is up everyone? Norman from Future Studio, the University. I hope you're having a fantastic day and welcome to another video in our Redford series. In this video, we will look at query parameters. So you will learn how you can use Retrofit to send requests with query parameters. You will also learn how you can make query parameters optional. So if you need to send a request where not every query parameter needs to be set and the user doesn't give any input, you can leave those out. Lastly, you will learn how you can send multiple query parameters of the same name. For example, if a request represents a search function and you want to search for multiple IDs, you can pass every ID as a separate query parameter, but they all have the same name. In this video, you will learn how to do that. As always, you can find the content as tutorials and the code snippets for easy carving pasting on our website. It's the first link in the description below. So I've prepared a little Android app, uh, which doesn't do too much. So it just has one button, which is starting the fake search. What we are going to implement now is passing different values to that search endpoint. First of all, we need to describe that search endpoint. So let's go into our service and we have here a user client. So we will implement a function with a search for user. And we have three parameters for our search engine. We have one, the ID of the user. We have second, the order. So if the search returns multiple users, in what order are they going to be sorted? And lastly, since the result is going to be paged, we can step through the different pages with the third parameter page. Now, since we're going to use query parameters, it must be get request. And in our example API, it's going to be under user. Now we will not really deal with the response. So we're just going to keep the general response body. And I need to add a semicolon back here. Now what we now need to do is to describe these three parameters as query parameters. And that's simply done with adding a notation called query. And in the query annotation, we can add the name of that query parameter. So the query parameter for ID is just going to be ID. The query parameter for the order is going to be sort, just to switch it up a little. And for page, it's going to be page again. This is the description for the search endpoint. So let's talk to that endpoint. We're going to go to our activity where I already have wired up the button. So we just need to implement it down here. I've also already prepared the retro client. If you have any questions about that, feel free to go to the first video in the series where we show you all the basics of retrofit. So we're going to use a user client and we're going to call search for users. I could have added some input, but we're just going to hard code it for now since it's just about the query parameters. So this is going to be, the ID is going to be 23, what you're looking for. It's ascending order, which is used shortly. And we just want the first page. We wrap this in a call object. And now we're going to execute that call object. We're going to use the async method since we're in a UI thread. And just like you know me, we're going to use toast messages to say if it worked or not. Now let's execute this. Okay, the start search button starts the request to the backend and I've added a breakpoint to the API. Down here, you can see that our request has a query object. And here we see the ID, we see the page, and we also see the sort parameter. So everything worked like we expected, excellent. Now what is not ideal about this code is that we always have to send all three parameters. Usually search engines have some defaults. 
For example, if you search something on Google and you don't specify the time frame, it will just show you all results even if it's 10 years old. You actively have to change that if you want to have a non-default uh, time frame. And it's the same here. In 90% of the cases, we want to have the first page of the users in ascending order of the users. So what we would like to do is get rid of these parameters and just assume them as the default value. This gets rid of the default logic on the app and puts it more to the server, which is good. And it also saves some bandwidth. You have to send less parameters to the server, so your users will appreciate a tiny little speed bump. In order to make these parameters optional, we need to change the API declaration. So we're just going to add a second option here. In almost all cases, Retrofit accepts a null value as a signal that you don't want to send that parameter. And it's the same as query parameters. So if you want to make a request where the page parameter is not set, so the server is just going to assume a default value, you can pass a null. Because we have used an int, we won't be able to pass a null. So we have to change these to integer values. String is already a nullable type, so we can leave that like that. If we go back here, we can now change these two to null. And what that means is when we're sending the request, it will only send the ID. It will not send the sort order or the page parameter. So the server will just assume a default error if that's the logic of the API. Obviously, that depends on what you're trying to implement it, but if parameters are optional, feel free to set them as null, and then Retrofit will ignore them. Let me show you how that works. And we're going to start search again. And we're going to switch to our API. So previously, we had all three parameters. And if we step through to the next request, we now see that there's only one parameter left, the ID. When setting them to null, Retrofit ignores them when creating the request and just not send anything. So keep in mind that you can use the box types for the query parameter description, and then you can pass a null to Retrofit. Retrofit will then ignore it, and everything works as you want to. So the last thing I want to show you is if you have multiple parameters of the same name. For example, if your search allows you to search for multiple IDs at the same time, so give me user with the ID 2, 5, and 6, you can do that with Retrofit too. One option is to use just the second parameter. It's important that you keep these two the same name, but you need to change the names back here, but they don't matter to the request itself. That's just for Java. So in this case, we would change this to 23 and 24. What that means is we are sending a request to the server where we're saying, please give me the rules for the ID 23 or 24. Once again, let's look at how the request looks like when it's arriving at the server. All right, we are going to start the search one more time. Searching to the back end. Previously, we have only seen one ID, and now we would expect two IDs. And here we are. There's an array for the ID now because we have sent two values for the same name. It will attach them to one array. And the server sees, okay, you're searching for users either the ID 23 or 24 now. Now, this works if you have a fixed amount of IDs. But if you have a user input and he can enter one ID or maybe 20, this gets really cumbersome because you would need to add 20 lines here. And this is hard to deal. You could send a null value for everything he doesn't set, but it's still not very nice. So the nicer solution is instead of declaring multiple lines, we're going to change this type from an integer to a list. Retrofit will take all the IDs you pass there and attach it to the request. So it doesn't matter if you pass one ID here or if it's going to be 10. Let's try this out too, and then we will be done for this video. So let's change this to And just now we had 23, 24, so let's add 25 to it. And just for fun, we're going to change this to page 12 and execute this thing. You know the drill, we click on start search, switching to our API, 
Just now we had two IDs and now there should be three. And just as promised, we now have three IDs, 23, 24, 25, and it looks the exact same way. So it doesn't matter if you declare multiple IDs in separate rows or if you use a list declaration. Feel free to use whatever fits best to your scenario. That's already everything for this video. Let's review what you have learned. In this video, you have seen how you can use query parameters with a query annotation. We have also shown you how you can make parameters optional by simply passing null to them and how Retrofit will then ignore those values and send the request without them. Lastly, we have shown you two ways on how you can send multiple query parameters with the same name. Thank you for watching. If you've learned something, please leave a like. And if you want to see more videos in this series, subscribe. Enjoy coding and make it rock.